Hello and welcome back to Owen Luthery. Welcome to part 5 of my Homemade to Handmade build series. In this part we are going to be going through the making of this walnut pickguard and also the ash knobs. So I'm starting off just taking apart the old pickguard that came, well that was originally on the guitar, just tracing it on using a yellow pencil so I can see it easier onto a walnut blank that I prepared earlier. I also marked where the screw holes needed to go and I'm using that brass punch then just to mark the places properly. Using drill bits then of the correct size just to check what size the holes need to be and I'm writing on the blank so it's I think 3mm for the upper one and 4 at the bottom and then it's over to the band saw to cut out. You can see here I used a black marker just to redefine the the outline and I changed it a little bit you can see on the outer edge there where I've brought it in made it more concave and obviously on the inner portion there I've also made that concave just for something a little bit different stand out a little bit And I'm cutting right up to the black line on the bandsaw here. It makes it easier for final shaping. You remember with the yellow pencil, I was marking the outside of the original pickguard, so this is going to be technically oversized. And onto the spindle sander here. After the last episode, I'm wearing a mask in this one now. You can just about see it in the top left corner. And of course, this is the one that produces very, very little dust. So stopping every so often, just running my fingers along the work that I'm doing, making sure it feels smooth as well as looks smooth. I've said it before, but oftentimes your fingers and your just touching will give you a more accurate, uh, more accurate description, I suppose, of whether or not something is a smooth line. Constantly just taking away a very small amount on the sander and then checking with the hands again all the time. Of course, none of these curves particularly matter. They don't need to be accurate or anything, they're not fitting around anything, it's the places for the pickups that actually need to be accurate. And using this bit then just to get the nice straight bit up at the top there, and yeah, using it to get the bulk away here. with the sandpaper attached to it like we saw in the previous video just it's a lovely flat surface and I just want to sand it all nice and flat bit of an awkward piece to sand just because of how thin it is. It's very tough to sand it properly on this without shredding the fingertips.
I figured out here I can hold it down with my left hand and use my right hand to just put to work it over the sandpaper. It's obviously not flattening it all equally, but that's okay here because I'm not taking off very much at all. I'm just using a it's a two inch painter's brush just to keep the sandpaper clean. Start here with 240 grit. Yeah, you can just about see it on the paper there, and I'm just rounding over the edges here. I thought about doing a 45 degree chamfer like what it originally would have had, but I thought the rounded over edge would look nicer. I'm glad I went with it. I'm using that brush here as well just to lift it up so I can get a better angle of attack with the sandpaper. I probably could have used 120 grit here just to make it go a little bit faster, but I decided to go with the 240. It gives a cleaner finish off the bat and there's less risk of putting large scratches or gouges into the pick out itself, into the face of it. So just using an acetone based thinner again just to clean off the wood, get all the dust off that I've just made. And once again we're using true oil as our finish of choice here. Same reason as everything else, I like the finish it produces. It's easy, pretty much foolproof to apply. What I'm just realizing we missed is the fine shaping. I use files just to shape the pickup sections on the pickguard. It didn't take too long at all. It was just a case of place the pickup rings that I have from my previous video on the guitar and then shape as needed until the pickguard fit on nicely. Moving on to the knobs here now, so these are, yeah, I had those chisels which were, the handles were very, very long on them. I just chopped them off and these are the leftovers. I thought they'd make fine knobs for this, for this project. Using this circle finder jig here, I got this one in Axminster, but I believe you can make your own fairly easily, but they're cheap enough to get. Definitely recommend picking one up So what we didn't film here was I used the pillar drill just to drill a hole that will take the uh, shaft of the potentiometer. I'm using CTS pots here, so I believe they needed a six mil. Well, they would have wanted a quarter inch, but I only had a six mil or a six and a half mil. The six and a half was too loose, so I used a six mil, and it works nicely. They're knurled shaft potentiometers, so they actually they fit themselves on really. The knurls will make the, the grooves in the knobs, and they fit well. I wouldn't want to be putting them on, removing them too much, but they work perfectly fine. 
There's a lot of hand sanding involved in these. It's not the most exciting thing to watch, but it's not the most exciting thing to do either. But it is rewarding when it's finished. And true oil again. And this is the finished result. I'm very happy with them. I think they came out nicely. I like the kind of weathered look on the knobs and I think the pick guard just looks great beside the pickup rings. So that's the end of the video. Thank you very much for watching. Throw a like, subscribe and stay tuned for more progress on this guitar. We're nearly done. Thank you.